So, Amazon decided to make its own TV. Let's see about that. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and today we're gonna unbox, set up, and get first impressions on the new Amazon Omni TV. Now, Amazon has decided to make its own TVs. It's got two different series, the four series, that's the least expensive or more affordable version. And then you have the Omni here, which is available in sizes from 43 all the way up to 75 with Dolby Vision available in the 65 and 75 inch models. We've got the 65 here. We're gonna have to check out a lot with this TV. First of all, there's a bunch of custom Amazon integration, as you might expect, but what else is gonna make this TV different than just buying, say, an Insignia or Toshiba Amazon Fire TV? Lots to discuss, but we can't get to any of that until we get this thing out of the box. So, let's do it. Before I dig into it, I just wanted to mention for everybody out there watching on YouTube that this TV, the 65 inch version, goes for about 830 bucks, at least for now. I'm sure it's gonna go on sale, especially with the holidays coming up. So, how do you feel about that pricing if you had to give up a few performance features. Let me know about that down in the comments. And while you're down there, please smash like and subscribe if you do indeed like this video and you find it helpful. We're on our way to a million subs and we got a huge giveaway coming. Be a part of it, please. Thank you very much, let's go. In the box with the TV, two feet, four screws, and if these look familiar, well, there's probably a reason for that. I'll explain that in a moment. Anyway, into the TV it goes, a little bit of screwing, and then we're done. Well, that was easy, and here we are with the back of the TV shot, and you know what I notice is that it looks very much like the back of a TV. I'm joking, there are a couple of things to notice here. Uh, one is that the inputs are on the left side of the TV as we face the back, as opposed to the right. We don't see that very often. The other thing I notice is that the HDMI ports are not labeled. I don't know what the specs on this TV are, like it just got announced and then it showed up and I pulled it out of the box. We're gonna find out about that in just a little bit when we plug the Xbox in. At any rate, it does have an eARC port, the other ports are unlabeled. Not sure about the gaming capabilities on this TV. The other thing I noticed is that there is room for an IR blaster. So I'm assuming this TV is gonna behave like an Amazon Fire TV Cube in that it can control other devices. We'll be checking that out soon as well. And of course, the USB port here isn't just for connecting media, but you can also connect a camera, which we're gonna do a little bit later for Zoom meetings. Now, let's flip this thing around. All right, let's fire this TV up. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, with most smart TVs, you should expect a little bit of an update delay once you first turn on the TV. Normally I say grab yourself a soda, brew yourself a cup of coffee, but in this case, maybe brew yourself an IPA because the update time is like, I don't know, 10 minutes? It seemed like it took forever. Once that's done though, you should automatically be signed into your Amazon account, just like you would be with uh, an Amazon Echo speaker or a Fire TV stick or even one of their Fire HD tablets. In this case, I wasn't, but I think that's probably because it's a review unit. Once you're signed in, you're gonna get a little bit of information about how Amazon's A Word will work on this TV. For instance, you can have it always listening, just like an Amazon Echo speaker, even if the TV is off, to use it like you would an Echo speaker for executing commands. The TV will come on if it needs to, if it's part of your command. Anyway, the other thing you wanna note is that you can turn off that always listening microphone down at the bottom of the TV. There's a little switch, just flip it over. When it's red, it's not listening. When it's off, it is. From there, if you have set up a Fire TV device in the past, it'll ask if you wanna restore from that setup. That means any apps that you have downloaded, and I'm hoping username and password for for each of those apps will automatically be ported over this TV. That said, it's still gonna ask if you wanna add certain apps as it's doing here. 
Once all that's done, you land at the Fire TV interface. If you're familiar with it, then you know what to expect. There will be a combination of suggested content up top mixed in with ads. For instance, it will suggest that you buy a Fire TV stick, which is ridiculous because we have a Fire TV right here. Anyway, below that, you'll have an option to switch profiles if you want to. You can go into your various different inputs. You can also go to live TV. This is going to be a combination of apps as well as any TV channels that were scanned in if you have an antenna connected to the TV. And of course, there's some quick access to apps up top as well. I find it interesting that they put Netflix before Prime Video, although if you go back to home, most of this stuff is going to be suggestions from Prime Video. Now, normally this is the section of the video where I would go into the settings and start making some uh, picture settings adjustments. We're actually going to break that out for you in a completely separate video. So hold tight for that. It'll be coming very soon. All right, so I feel like there's quite a bit to talk about here. First of all, let's talk about this being an Amazon built TV. I don't think so. Yes, they probably have a lot of say into the specs and what kind of hardware goes into it, but at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure this TV is being built by TCL. That would make TCL Amazon's manufacturing partner. I mean, the signs are all there from the feet to the backing of the TV to the bezels and that telltale thing right down in the center where you turn off the mic. It's all very much TCL. So I think TCL is Amazon's manufacturing partner in this case. That does not mean that we're necessarily going to get TCL quality. And even if we did, at what level? Four series, five series, six series? That's what we're going to find out. Although I'll say initial impressions are actually fairly good. I think this TV is definitely not a piece of garbage. And I was a little bit worried about that. We've seen some other Fire TV models that I was not excited about. This one though, pretty decent, but then we have to take a look at the price and everything else that comes with this TV is the fact that it's got all the latest Amazon Fire TV features built right in a good enough reason to buy this TV as opposed to say a TCL 5 series or 6 series and add an Amazon Fire TV stick. That's what we're going to have to find out for the full review and I can't wait to find out where this TV lands. Thanks, as always, for watching, everybody. What do you think about Amazon making its own branded TV? I mean, they make everything else, right? Leave me a comment about that down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and here's two other videos I think you'll like.